Good evening, I'm Maham Tawa with the news making headlines around the world. His Highness the Emir receives the Minister of Information and a group of scholars and religious lecturers. His Highness the Prime Minister receives chairman and board members of trustees of the Journey of Hope that visited many countries to draw attention to the mentally disabled. Israel continues to pound targets in the Gaza Strip as top US and UN diplomats pursue talks on halting the fighting. And Iraq's Prime Minister condemns Israel's bombardment of Gaza Strip and the targeting of religious communities in Iraq. <coughs> in our first item, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah received this morning at Sif Palace His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah. His Highness the Emir also received the former National Assembly Speaker Jasim Mohammed Al Khrafi. His Highness the Emir then received His Highness Sheikh Jabal Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Emir later received the first deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received at Sif Palace at noon today the Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs Sheikh Salman Subah Salim Lahmoud Al Subah and a number of scholars and religious preachers, namely Dr. Muhammad Abdul Razak Al Taqtabai, Dr. Isam Abdul Rahim Al Gharib, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Sinan, Dr. Ahmed Abdul Rahman Al Kous, Dr. Mubarak Saif Al Hajri, and Dr. Bassam Khudr Ashati and Dr. Sliman Marafi. The meeting was attended by the Deputy Minister of the Amiri Diwan Affairs, Sheikh Ali Jarrah Subah. His Highness the Emir addressed the meeting with the following speech We are people of one family, one religion, and one language. I am happy to meet you all, wondering what is it that people differ about in this country. Thank God no one is sleeping in the street, no one is hungry and no one sought asylum in another country because of injustice. However, they describe this country as totally corrupt. They invent unimaginable things. They allege that millions or even billions were sent out of the country even to Israel. However, all those claims were referred to the general prosecution and we asked the Audit Bureau to receive anyone who has an evidence or who wanted to invite a foreign company to investigate. We have full confidence in our judiciary system and we are proud of our judges. But I want to assert that all this commotion is motivated by the one vote issue. Believe me, there is nothing but this single vote. Is there any country without a single vote system? On the contrary, the world has adopted the one vote system. You can serve your country in any place not only in senior positions. You serve your country in television channels and your channels are always open and can be heard in the Gulf Cooperation Council member states. I really want to thank the Minister of Information for this good group which accompanied him. God bless us. God blessed us with oil and liberation of our country after seven months of cooperation, of occupation. It was liberated by the whole world, which is a real testimony to the kindness of its people. His Highness concluded his speech by urging the scholars and lecturers to call upon all people to think of building and protecting their country and keeping it away from evil. His Highness the Emir also prayed to Almighty God to protect our beloved country. <coughs> His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah sent today a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, on the occasion of the 62nd anniversary of the 23rd of July Revolution. 
His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah also sent a cable of congratulations to His Excellency the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi on the occasion of the 62nd anniversary of the 23rd of July Revolution. And His Highness Sheikh Jaber Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar cable. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received this morning at Sif Palace the former National Assembly Speaker Jasim Mohammed Al Khrafi. His Highness the Crown Prince also received His Highness Sheikh Jabal Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Crown Prince later received the First Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince also received the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Interior and Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. And finally, His Highness the Crown Prince received the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Khalid Al Jarrah Al Subah. His Highness Sheikh Jabir Limbarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister, received the Sif Palace today, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Journey of Hope, His Excellency the Advisor at His Highness the Prime Minister's Diwan Faisal Mohammed Al Hajji, and the Council members. They explained to His Highness the route covered by the journey, which set out from Kuwait last May and traveled to several countries in order to show the cultural image of Kuwait and to raise interest in providing care to the mentally disabled. Advisor Al Hajji expressed gratitude on behalf of the board members and himself to the patronage of His Highness the Emir and His Highness the Crown Prince, as well as to the attention accorded to the journey members by His Highness the Prime Minister, who provided them with the necessary means of success so as to help the journey to achieve its humanitarian goals and raise greater attention and care about the mentally disabled and people with special needs. As world powers collaborate to broker a ceasefire in Gaza Strip, millions of activists worldwide are taking steps to support those suffering from the offensive. The Kuwait Red Crescent Society has joined the rally hosting a campaign this week to collect the necessities needed to bring the hundreds of Palestinians humanitarian relief. Our correspondent Badria Saleh brings us this report. Kuwait Red Crescent Society officially launched its donation campaign this week for the benefit of the people in Gaza bearing the brunt of Israeli attacks. We accepting it two times a day. We starting from morning, uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And in the evening, we starting from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock evening. Uh, we accept all the money is cash. Uh, we we have also if uh, nobody have cash, you can we using the kinet to to get the uh, the money. Uh, this is all we will starting to buy the uh, medicals and uh, uh, to send it to the people of Gaza from the uh, people of Kuwait. The five day long donations drive is focused on providing quick emergency relief such as medicine and medical equipment a paramount need for the scores living in Gaza, falling victim to Israel's operation. Um, I just want people to not forget about the issue after this is over because it's an ongoing struggle and no matter how many times we try to bring light on the topic, it's still neglected and it's still like the media isn't like shedding light on this topic like they should and so I don't want people to forget about this once we're done. The medical supply sponsored by this drive will be transferred first to Egypt, where humanitarian workers will collect and distribute the materials to those who need it most. At Kuwait Red Crescent Society, this is Padriya Saleh reporting for the English News. 
For a third week in a row, the Israeli forces continued to pound the Gaza Strip's largest city as well as other parts of the coastal territory. The Palestinians said that Israel is randomly deploying a wide array of modern weaponry against Gaza's people, inflicting a heavy civilian death toll and destroying large amounts of property there. According to Gaza health officials, the war killed at least 657 Palestinians, most of them civilians. Our correspondent in Gaza, Majd el Wahidi, has more details in this report. With every single Israeli airstrike in Gaza, a Palestinian dies or gets wounded. Others get buried under the rubble of their houses. There is no safe place to evacuate in the face of an airstrike or a grand attack. On one ill-fated night, Israeli artillery shelling killed more than 100 people in al shajaya neighborhood of Gaza. Hundreds of others were left wounded and displaced. Shajaya, a densely populated neighborhood, has now become a gray area, speaking volumes about the act of a genocide Israel has committed just days ago. It was a very violent bombardment. We were hiding in one room together. When I opened the door of our house, I found two imbalances, but both were destroyed. We tried to leave, but artillery shelling reached our house. My wife and two daughters were killed. I thought my daughter Maha did as well, but thanks God, she's alive now. Since Israel launched the so-called Operation Protective Edge, the human loss has been immense. However, Israel insists it's only targeting Hamas and other resistance groups who continue to fire rockets into Israel. The United Nations, along with leading human rights organizations, say at least 80% of those killed are civilians. Many rights activists have termed Israeli aggression as a war against children. The Palestinian people are fighting for a just cause simply because we want to live in honor and dignity in our own land. We are not interested in killing anybody. We are not interested in harming anybody or hurting anybody. We want just to live in our own country, to see the siege lifted, to see the occupation ended, to see our life far much better. And this is why we, we uh, send our call. We appeal to the whole world, to the Western world, to the so-called democratic world, to come up to the help of the Palestinian people to put an end to this uh, genocidal aggression against the Palestinian people. Numbers in this war show a power imbalance between warring sides. Israelis have sustained 27 fatalities so far. In Gaza, more than 600 Palestinians have lost their lives. Neither fighters in Gaza nor Israeli army are in mood to stop, and civilians are dreading more violence as there is no ceasefire in sight. The impact of this war has become a heartbreaking reality of the conflict. Everyone here has a story of loss and suffering. No one is safe and the whole population is trapped between a no-go zone and fears of death and destruction. Majlou Hedi, Kuwait TV, Gaza. Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon met with Israel's Foreign Minister Avidor Lieberman and Justice Minister Sisi Libni today as he continued to try to bring about an end to the fighting between Hamas and Israel. Before meeting Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah, Ban said that there was no time to lose in brokering a ceasefire in the ongoing conflict in Gaza. The remarks came a day after Ban held talks with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, rejecting the idea that Israel should use military means to combat Hamas's indiscriminate rocket fire on its sovereign territory. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry claimed some progress towards halting the Israeli-Palestinian bloodshed in Gaza. Kerry arrived in Tel Aviv earlier in the day despite a Federal Aviation Administration ban put in place a day earlier after a Hamas rocket landed nearby. Meanwhile, Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said today that his country tried several times before the, la the latest conflict in Gaza to de-escalate the tension between Hamas and Israel, particularly after the abduction of three Israeli soldiers.
And moving on to Iraq, where Prime Minister Nouri al-Malki condemned today Israel's bombardment of the Gaza Strip and accused Arab countries and the international community of not reacting to the war between Israel and Hamas. In a televised weekly address, al-Malki also condemned the Islamic State extremist group for targeting religious communities in Iraq and pledged to protect them. Thousands of people fled Mosul after they were given a deadline by the militants to convert to Islam, pay a tax or face death. The remarks came a day after Iraqi security forces killed about 117 insurgents in a series of battles with the militant groups across Iraq as the government forces were trying to take back the land seized by rebel fighters recently. Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniev Yatatsanyuk announced today that his government was delegating the investigation into the crashed Malaysian air's flight to the Dutch. Ukraine and Western nations are pressing the pro-Russian rebels who controlled the crash site to allow an investigation, something Russian President Vladimir Putin said he would use his influence to achieve. Speaking at a government meeting in the capital, Kiev, the premier also stated that Ukraine would be contacting Russia as he was concerned that Moscow was directly involved in financing what he called the terrorist in Ukraine. The Ukrainian government reiterated that the plane crash was an act of terrorism and that the remains of the dead had not been treated properly by the pro-Russian rebels controlling the crash site. Typhoon Matmo churned ashore in southeastern China and was downgraded to a tropical storm, while the death toll from last week's more powerful typhoon Ramasun rose further. After passing across Taiwan overnight, Matmo made landfall in China's heavily populated province of Fujian, where nearly 300,000 people had been evacuated. According to the Hong Kong Observatory, Matmo was forecast to turn north and pass over areas west of Shanghai, China's biggest business center. Further south on the mainland, the communities were clearing away debris left by Typhoon Ramusin that raised the total number of deaths in the Philippines, China and Vietnam to 161. And in our final item, moving to the local financial news, where the three main indices of Kuwait Stock Exchange ended the trading session with a mixed performance, as the price index gained 21 points to reach 7,118 points. The KSX 15 index, however, lost five points and settled at the level of 1,174 points. The share of the Pearl of a Kuwait real estate company was the top gainer of the day, while that of Al Safat Technology Holding Company was the top decliner. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Well, with that, we conclude our news bulletin. Thank you for joining us. Have a pleasant time. I'm Maham Pawa. Before we go, we remind you once again of our main top stories. Have a pleasant time and good night. His Highness the Emir receives the Minister of Information and a group of scholars and religious lecturers. His Highness the Prime Minister receives chairman and board members of trustees of the Journey of Hope that visited many countries to draw attention to the mentally disabled. Israel continues to pound targets in the Gaza Strip as top US and UN diplomats pursue talks on halting the fighting. And Iraq's Prime Minister condemns Israel's bombardment of the Gaza Strip and the targeting of religious communities in Iraq.